Hello everyone, it's Angie here at Beads and Plenty More. Today I thought I'd show you how to do a pearl knotted necklace. So I'm not doing pearls all the way around. I've actually got leather cording at the back of this necklace and just a pearl center in the, in the front of it. But I'm gonna show you how to use French wire, which is this hollow wire tubing. So I've got, got some beads picked out to do one. And I'm using, I've got a roughly an eight to 10 millimeter freshwater pearl, and I'm using size four silk. So that's 0 .0, 0 0.60 millimeters. And when I picked out the French wire, I had to make sure that the French wire I picked out had a thicker or a larger size. So this one's 0 0.9 millimeters thick. Um, I will post a full supply list at the end of the video just to give you something you can screenshot and be able to take to, into the store to shop with. So this French wire, I'm just gonna come and cut a couple pieces. So I'm cutting mine just over a centimeter. I just want two that match for the two sides. Um, you can actually cut this with scissors as well. And one thing you wanna watch with French wire is that you don't pull it out because it's really just a coiled wire and you start to get these little kinks and stuff which makes that wire unusable. So you wanna be really careful with it. It is a little bit fragile. So with this Griffin silk cord, it's this stuff here um, that I showed you the card for. Um, it has the needle attached already. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna thread three of my beads on. Now the reason that I'm using a size four is because I need to go through these beads twice to use the French wire. Um, normally a bead this size, I'd probably go one size bigger. And it's really gonna depend on your beads because every bead has a different size hole. So I told you these were between eight and 10 millimeters, but if you're using semi-precious beads, for example, instead, they're gonna have possibly a different size hole and you will have to factor that in, in your calculations for what you're using. So at this point, I'm gonna come through the French wire And French wire gets used, oftentimes you'll see it on around the clasp area. And I'm gonna go through my, my ring that's gonna make my end because we wanna loop around that ring. So I might just put a little knot in the end of this so that I don't have my beads slide off by mistake. Just something to hold them on. And then I am going to come back through the bead that's closest to that ring. So these are going to fit fairly tight. Pull everything good and tight. So as you can see, I've got that ring around my ring there. I probably could have made that a little bit smaller too. It doesn't have to be quite that large. And then I've got my tail end and I've got my working thread. So I am going to bring my working thread around that tail end and I'm going to create a loop. So I'm going over top of it and through my loop that I create. So it's gone around the tail thread. And you see the loop's gone around? No, if I just grab, I've got a pin here. Just going to use the pin to manipulate it into place. And you don't pull the pin out until you're absolutely certain that you want it. You have it where you want it. So this can be a little bit fussy at times, but you want to make sure you've got it where you want it nice and tight. And then I just pull the pin out and with my thumb and my finger, I'm gonna slide my knot closer to the bead. So that's first one done. Then we're gonna come through this middle one.
And this time, instead of using the working thread, I'm gonna bring the tail thread around. So I'm bringing this one around. And I guess underneath, because I went that way instead. So it's around my other thread, and then I need to come through my loop. everything nice and tight and worked in. And then we'll go through that third bead. One thing I often tell people when they're working with this pearl cord is it's two meters long so unless you've got a really long necklace um, practice a little bit first because you probably won't use the full two meters for your project and if you get a knot in the wrong place on the first few you can just cut it and start again so this time I'm just bringing the working thread around the tail thread So at this point, that tail thread could get cut off because we're done with it. And I'm just gonna continue on with my beads with my single thread. So at this point, I'm just gonna put a bead on. And I'm gonna make my loop so round and through. Sometimes you want to flip it over, make sure it's good and secure before you. That one probably could have been just a little tighter, but I, I'm going to leave it. We're good. So I'm going to work till I have nine beads on here, and then I'm going to put my center on. So in this case, I've just picked out a sardonyx pendant, pendant and I've put a head pin through it to make it into an actual pendant. Everybody develops their own technique. You'll find that I tend to not use the pin, but I control the knot. But when you're first learning that pin, it's very handy because it can keep that knot from tightening up to the point where you can't get it loose. And that one's a little bit looser than I wanted it to be, but 
Actually, let's go back and fix that. That one is too loose. So one thing I can do is I can just tie another knot on top of it. And what happens is I end up with a slightly larger knot, but that's not, not something that people will notice necessarily when they're looking at your, so see how that tightened up and it's nice and tight now. There you go. Tricks on how to fix it when you make a mistake. One more and then we get the pendant piece on. So I guess I tied a knot there. Probably didn't have to, but it'll put a space there for this pendant. And I'm just gonna stitch through the top that I created when I put the head pin through it. And then we'll put the bead on for the other side. Just give me a moment to get a few beads on here and then we'll get to the other side of the, with that French wire. I'll show you how to do the other one. Okay, so these last ones here, I'm going to thread them on, and I'm not actually going to put any knots between them. So the last three here. Then we're going to go through this French wire. And I need my other ring for the other side. And I'm going to come back through my first bead here. Mm. 
You can hear the chord there, but it's a tight fit through that bead. Um, it's a bit of a challenge to shop for something because you want it to fit tight through the beads to get the knot big enough, but you also want to be able to get through them. So I'm not pulling this super, super tight. You can see there's a little bit of spacing in there. And that's because I have to go in and now add those two knots that are missing. So I'm gonna come between the two beads here and I'm gonna create the knot that's missing. So there's my one knot. And I need to get in there and thread between the two beads here. Sometimes it helps to have pliers. Oh, and I threaded through the wrong bead. That's why it went so easily. See, even the pros make mistakes at times. So we'll get it through the right bead here. No, oh, this is not gonna go easy. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the time to go through that bead, tie a knot in here, and then I'm going to thread my tail end through this bead, and I'll cut it on this side. So when I get that done, I'm going to use the GS Hypo Cement to actually glue these last couple knots in here. So this one's got a nice fine point. It works really well for this. And then I can take this tail end and the tail end on this side and just trim them up really nice and tight to the to the knot because the knot is also glued. So let's move on and we'll talk about the cording on the back. So I've got 18 inches of suede lacing cut for each side here. And I'm just gonna fold it in half. And it's gonna loop through my ring and then back through to make a half hitch knot. So once I have that, I can take my tail ends, bring them to the back. And what I've picked out is I picked out a clasp that has um, cord ends and I've got a clasp in the middle with a couple rings. So I'm gonna lay my two ends together in that cord end. And I like to use my thumb to hold it in. So you can see my thumb's actually holding the tails and then I'm just gonna take a pair of pliers. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm folding one side down first, and then the other side on top. And that creates my end for my piece. So I'll finish this up and I'll show you the other, the finished product at the end. Have a good day.